Hi guys, and I'm Dit. Go again. They are very nice, very sexy hit, hit engines. I'm happy, this is the little engine shed there. Uh, nobody's led through the door normally. It's exclusive access. Oh yes. <laughs> awesome. Hi guys, I'm Dave and welcome to Maker. Please like and subscribe guys. We've noticed a lot of you in it and not subscribing, so that'd help me out greatly. Anyway, today I'm introducing you to Project Pippin. We've been so busy on it this week. And as you can see here, it's totally rebuilt. This is a 26 year old car that has done 244,000 miles. Adam adores this car and his partner Tracy and he came here probably, it was about two years ago and he showed a bit of interest. I thought, oh, he's just wasting my time. And then he came back and then he had a, and then he had a little dog with him, another little dash end. Of course, the little dash end was called Pippin. So he's named the car after the dog, Project Pippin. So took a shine to him and I thought, you know what? We will rebuild this car for him. And I'm just going to talk you around of what's happened. So we've got a brand new, uh, that's a galvanized bulkhead there. The paint shop love galvanized bulkheads because they've always got bits of scruffy bits here and there to tidy up. But what I like about them is that they do last. There's no more crust and rust. So we're fortunate enough to have the original vehicle. And if you look over there, Jacob is currently pulling it to bits. He's looking busy anyway. So there you have it. And we've done lots of minor upgrades. So we've gone with an Alisport upgraded cooling kit. And if you come around here, Ben, you'll notice there's something very unusual in this area. So we've gone with this monstrous VNT turbo. So M&D Engineering supplied us with this kit. It's literally a bolt-on upgrade. And it sure does provide some tasty boost. And Louis today has been going through the wiring redoing that and getting it all back in where it should be. We've given it some nice stainless boost pipes because we hate like this. I hate this. So that's coming off and we're going to make a nice smooth fabricated one like the one you see down here and with some more of Nikki's beautiful welding because I hate that. And talking of welding, if you think you can meet our standards and our spec, if you like, to come and work for maker please get in touch with me guys we've lost a welder and a fabricator last week yeah tom unfortunately left us to be back closer to his home up and up in the north so we are looking for somebody to fill his boots unfortunately so if you've got what it takes come and see me thank you very much Glad you're back, Louie. Oh yeah. You're the only one who knows how to do anything. Bang on. There's something wrong here. See that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you don't have this hole. The hole is over here. Do you need to find one like yeah, that? I see. I see. Baby. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to find you one? Uh, you can. At least it's not in the car yet. Yeah. All right. What are you to hear, Bruno? Eh? So this is a new clutch pedal box that's going in that freshly built 300 TDI just through there. Um, basically the old pedal box wasn't in too good of a shape so it certainly needed changing. At the, uh, at the same time we put a new master in it. This is still the same line, still the same clutch line because they're getting quite rare now so if they're in good nick then we try and keep them all all together, so it saves trying to find hen's teeth, really. Um, but yeah, one one problem that I had earlier was, because it's an early Defender, I grabbed this pedal box for the clutch, and as you can see, it wasn't quite the right one, and uh, I noticed it, luckily, a bit earlier on, so it wasn't completely built. Uh you noticed it. Well, Louis noticed it. Um, yeah, we'll put in um, put in the spring in, 
and uh, yeah, that's when when it was noticed because basically where it bolts into the bulkhead, whether you can see, it's a different shape. Uh, so therefore, I wouldn't have this bolt hole in there so it won't bolt on properly to the bulkhead. So we had to change that over and here we are building up this one now, ready to go in. Right, so what you see here is an LT4 with one sex exhaust system. So Nick's been busy this week bringing the headers all the way down here inside this rather large canister. Gary that we're building this car for, his words were, I want it F loud. And if he had this car straight pipe, it would be a dragster and it would probably upset all his neighbours. So we've gone a little bit reserved, but it will still be very loud because you'll probably send them baffles out the back of the tails pipes in the first thousand miles. So there you have it, this is an LT4 supercharged, so it's a 6.2 litre with a big supercharger strapped to the top of it. All right, Nicky, what were you fabricating today? Just another day, another exhaust. For, I don't think it's got quite got a name, but the, it's quite a special engine. Uh, LT4 supercharged, you know, proper job. Let's make an exhaust system for that. Two and a half inch down pipes into a three inch system and another quad exit, my favorite. Awesome. So we've seen little bits of what this is before with the purging system yeah i've never noticed on the end here you've actually got uh, what do you call it a bit of a valve just a, or? just a diffuser just to let the gases out well, basically purging we would block off both ends put argon pure argon in the lowest end it'll fill up the pipe all the oxygen will come out the pipe and it'll give me a nice weld on the inside so it'll be welded on the inside and outside. Just going to be strong, you know, it'll never crack. Just a proper job. So I suppose the diffuser on the end there is so that we do have a constant supply of argon coming in as well. Yeah, because if we blocked it off completely, we'd have too much gas pressure in there. And because we were welding it, basically we're melting the metal just enough to penetrate the inside. So if there's too much pressure inside, it'll just blow a hole. So we've got to let some gases out. Awesome, let's crack on.
this is our Porsche, is it? This is the Porsche that we're doing, yeah. Um, as you can see now, we're on to the building of the carpets and all inside, um, refitting them, gluing them, getting them all ready. And then obviously we'll start then fitting the seats and finishing all the interior off. Obviously, I'm guessing this is a nice change for you, for well, yeah, Land Rovers. Yeah, it's something different. It's, something, it's nice to have a change now and again. You know, one of our good customers has asked, asked us to sort out mechanically and uh, the interior. Um, so, obviously, we, we said yes, because it's obviously something nice to do, something different for all of us, really. Even the boys have been working on the engine and stuff, getting it running. So, but yeah, it's been a nice change from, from Land Rovers. Are there any particular challenges you've faced with this one? Uh, yeah, I've never worked on a Porsche before, so it's always a challenge. Um, like fitting the carpet is like a massive jigsaw puzzle. So I've been trying to find out bits where I go and stuff because we're, we're taking it over from somebody else who's already attempted to do it and didn't really get that far by the looks of it. So I've now jumped on it. So I've got like half a job here and there's bits missing and got to find bits. And so yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's, uh, it's a good challenge and it's a nice jigsaw to get on with. So today, Darren and Anne Edward have been busy converting this L83 from direct injection to port injection. So our friends in the US, Brugia Conversions, supplied us this conversion. Jeff's been, Jeff and I have been chatting for some time now about how to get the most power out of these motors. And he's not a fan of direct injection. And he said, Dave, you need to start sending it back down the port. So I said, sort me a kit out and we'll give it a go. And Tom, who owns Project Christine, was all up for it. So he was up for being the guinea pig and giving us some good power. So that's exactly what we've done. So hopefully over the next few days, we can make some noise out of this girl. You're just jealous. You're just jealous. Oh, no, no, better, yeah. <laughs> so Pete, we've got a lovely looking 200 TDI here. Uh, what sort of stage is this at, at the moment? Um, well, we're I'm just about to put the cylinder head on it and also the outer casing um, and then put the timing sign on after that. Um, but it's, uh, it's not, it, they're, they're quite interesting to do because it's, uh, it's old school, which is what I'm used to. So uh, We'll just nuts and bolts, no 
fancy electronics. No, like no, that. well, not not so much fancy electronics. No, but it's a bit more old school than the, some of these American engines that we've got. Getting the head on now. What's the process involved in that? Well, first of all, we'll put the side timing casing on, which goes on this end, and then here's the head which I've now got ready to go in. So what sort of prep work have you had to do on this? Well, this has been out, it's been machined, new valves, reseated. Um, I'll just give it a lick of uh, top coat to, uh, for appearance wise. Um, and then it'll be a straightforward cylinder head gasket on and torque it down. And uh, she'll be good to, to go. And then it's ready for a chassis. Well, it'll be ready for, I don't think this has actually got an owner at the moment, so um, it'll be put into a crate ready for uh, whenever it's required. Gives the engine a chance when it's uh, first firing up, so it's not dry anywhere. What's the lube of choice here? It's a, well, it's just a semi-synthetic, which it'll um, just lubricate the bores while the rings start to bed themselves in. Right, Chris, what have you been planning for Rodent here? So we need to make a video when Dave and Rob go on Scrum Africa and we need to get some footage because last year we relied just on Dave using his phone and as much as we try and remind Dave to film in landscape for the video, Dave records everything in portrait. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get the footage from Dave and Rob from their phones but we want a bit more onboard action and we actually want to see where they're going. So we're building a system that's going to have three cameras Three cameras in here, one, one here facing out the front so we can see where they're going, one facing back on the driver and one in the cab here looking down on them. The system's going to have a start-stop button so we're not reliant on the guys having to trigger individually the cameras. Uh, be very much like, the, like they have in the rally cars, that kind of on board, so they'll just have to press once, they'll see that it's recording and then they can press stop. Um, and then at the end of the day there is a download button that can then archive the footage from all of those, empty the memory cards and it'll all be backed up to a hard drive. Um, which you, Ben, will have to sift through when you uh, when the guys get back home. So that's how we're going to cover Scrum Africa 2023. <laughs> Thank you. 
like a tubular doors like that. That's what you're doing in this? For this, yeah. So you're taking the door off and all, they're yeah. just going to be a tubular frame? Tubular door with mesh and then a bit of rest to put your shoulder pad on, just let the air in. But won't all the sand come in? No. Yeah. It comes in anyway, mate. It comes oh, in does it? Anyway. We got fucking rinsed and been done. So here I am, right, fitting this hinge because I left it to Rob and he, he hasn't done it yet. How long have you been at it, Rob? Three minutes. You only gave me the box five minutes ago. Right. They are very nice, very sexy hinges. And it may, if they've could hold them, they don't break my hinges. It's a good job they're anodized because they've just tested it. Right. So when we're in the dead and it's... And it, blah, 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 blah. So when we're in the desert and it's getting a bit warm, we can take the doors off and it allows air flow around the feet. Right, so what the plan is, David and his brother Stephen from Valstone Engineering have come up with these lift-off hinges. The idea is, so imagine this is on the passenger side. I'll tell you what, here's the door here, right? So as you can see there, you got, where's the bottom half, Robert? Right, this is the, the part the counterpart that bolts to the door. This is the part that bolts to the hinge. So what they've done is develop this. So this lives on the bulkhead, this lives on the door. You lift your door off. And the idea is, if you look in this second kit here, you can basically have two, so four doors in total. You can have two that are bolted on your garage at home. So you can have a summer set of doors and a winter set of doors. And I've been asking my current suppliers for a set of these hinges for a long time to make me a custom set. and. And then Dave just seemed to come out of the woodwork and go, look what I'm producing. And another good thing is they're, they're developing tubular doors. So as me and Rob found when we were in Africa, we got very sweaty rollocks. So we decided that we needed some more airflow here, but because Rob's a man of leisure, he carried on to Portugal and decided to take his doors off and then called me an hour later and said, Dave, we should have took the doors off in Africa. Didn't you? The difference taking the doors off, get air around your feet, was like chalk and cheese. And honestly, anything not to see David naked would have been worth its weight in gold. So there you have it, guys. If you want a set of these hinges, they're £550 and they come in this beautiful box. Look at that. Even they come with a key ring, okay? I'm going to talk Dave into making that into a bottle opener because you can just tell he doesn't drink. That's why he's done it like that. He should have made the bottle opener. He's a guy that's an engineer and he couldn't open a bottle with that, could he? No. Open the bottle with anything. Oh, yeah. So there you have it, guys. If you want to set hinges that are the dog's doodlies, oh. there you have it. And we'll try not to keep dropping things. All right, Gareth, what are you doing with the Porsche 90 this week? So at the minute, just building up the do two front doors. Um, so just putting in the window seals, all the locks and new handles. Uh, we've got a new handle on that side, a billet handle, I believe. Um, we've sound deadened all the inside, um, dodo matted the roof. Um, that's about it at the minute. So this is something we haven't done before, if you like. So this is a fully rebuilt Puma. So this came to us as a very boring maroon red, if you like. And Dave, who owns it, wanted this Porsche PTS green. What do you think of that?
so this is John's Overland 110 and it's turned into a big monster project and yeah my head's um scratching and rattling again with this project but last weekend we had the guys of Felstone Engineering here um with their scanning machine Dave and his brother did a a fantastic job and then you see all the tape here it looks like um, an adolescent teenager has been having fun but it's not it's, it's there for a reason so the scanner can pick up on the surfaces because it hates flat surfaces for those that don't know that and you see here this is the dust that we have to use this is actually dry hairspray so same again if it creates a texture the scanner can pick it up more accurate and the reason why we've been scanning it is because we're converting the inside of this into CAD so we can figure out what can fit where and, and build a bit of a configurator and have a play about with some software because we've built an Overland truck before and I, I almost believe that it needs to be built about three times because there's always something that you wish you could change. Um, we've gone for this, I can't really pronounce this right, Icarus I think it is, um, pop top and look, I'm six foot four and I can stand up in here very happily. There's a bed above that and it drops down like so, really nice bit of kit, do love it. Um, it's got a double skinned outer, we've got mosquito nets and his, John's wife is very pleased to know about those. Um, we've got built in lights here, which are quite handy. Just sit above your bed if you want a bit of reading light at night. And we fitted these side lockers. These actually came from a company in Poland. And let me just check the brand of those guys because I've actually forgotten. So they're made by Hyena, fantastic quality product. And those give us about 150 mil of storage so you can organize things in there because what i want to be able to create in here is not so much a livable area but an area where they can get their head down at night but also very cleverly thought out so as you can see here what i was just sat on this is actually a composting toilet john said it is a must to have it it's going to be in the middle of nowhere he wants to go to iceland places like that and this toilet we are actually going to find the best location for it and I'm thinking behind maybe one of the seats, somewhere where they can come down at night and if they really need to use the toilet, there's nothing worse than trying to climb out of a vehicle when you're half awake, pitch black, it could be in somewhere actually quite dangerous where they want to be safe and secure. So it's things like that. We need to think about everything on this project. So the cooking equipment, we decided today we're going to take it out the side and create like a nice bench area behind the, on the passenger side of the car. At the back, we're going to create an area for John's camera equipment and storage equipment to show it's versatile, well thought out and clever i want to say is the main word so there you have it guys keep keen on this thing here it's um it's going to be a great project but it's a project that i want to put all my thought into so there you have it anyway thanks again for watching please like and subscribe guys we need to grow this channel and we need your help to do so so please do that for me and i'll see you next week